uh, I would like to uh, welcome Major General Tahamid Hussain for the update management of IGN Prabhupada. Major Tahamid Hussain, you got only uh, 10 minutes. I, uh, I will take additional two minutes only. Okay. Assalamu alaikum, respected chairpersons, uh, senior nephrologists, and learned audience. Today's uh, presentation is Management Tablet of IgA Nephropathy. Uh, the slides, please. Uh, due to time constraint, I will uh, directly go to the topics. Today, we will discuss about, in, in very brief, about the updated pathogenesis of IgA Nephropathy, the updated management of IgA Nephropathy based on the 2021 category guideline and the uh, future, hopefully, the future management of IgA Nephropathy. IgA Nephropathy, you know, it is the messenger proliferative global nephritis characterized by diffuse messenger proliferation of IgA. It is the commonest global nephritis worldwide, but the uh, incidence varies on the geographical areas. It is most in the Far East, East Eastern region, and it is very rare in the Sub Saharan Africa. The pathogenesis was first, it was in four step pathogenesis, multi step pathogenesis. Uh, the increased uh, circulating levels of galactose deficiency of immunoglobulin A1, formation of antibody against immunoglobulin, galactose deficiency immunoglobulin A1, immunocompress deposition, and ultimately inflammation. Now, the uh, latest our knowledge is expanding, and we know that the details pathogenesis, which uh, starts from the mucosal lumen with the formation of uh, B cell, B cell priming, which leads to the formation of immunoglobulin deficient IgA, and that then ultimately leading to the other steps. Due to time constraint, I will go in short, very short. So, the diagnosis is based on and the hist histology. The light microscopy features, IgA nephropathy can have it feature as light microscopy almost anything. We, we know the missed classification of criteria, all of us know that in the first study type in picture A, we see the messenger proliferation, in picture B, segmental uh, proliferation, in C, diffuse endocapillary proliferation, in D, the uh, crescents, and uh, E, the diffuse endocapillary proliferation and the crescents. The defining feature is the uh, immunoglobulin A deposition in the light uh, electrophoresis, the element of fluorescence. But there can be also deposition of C3 in more than 90% cases and also sometimes immunoglobulin G, but it is predominant immunoglobulin A. The clinical presentation, IgNFPT can almost present as like anything. But the most common is like asymptomatic macroscopic hematuria and episodic macroscopic hematuria, the classical, the synpharyngetic variant. There can be also nephrotic presentation, <coughs> the nephrotic syndrome, or nephrotic protein without nephrotic syndrome or AKI and sometimes present such CKD. The prognosis is very variable, but usually uh, about 30 to 50 percent develop, patient develop ESKD within 30 years. The IGA prognostic tool which has been uh, published, we know that the prognostic parameters, uh, the clinical parameters like the uh, hypertension, blood pressure at presentation, the proteinuria at the time of biopsy, A is at the time of biopsy, GF at the time of biopsy, uh, with that, the treatment history, like uh, the, patient, where the patient was getting asymptomatic RB or immunosuppressive at the time of biopsy, or the histological features, the missed classification, missed not C, the crescent is excluded here, because the data within the crescentic patient uh, was very less. This prediction tool was validated in many studies. They recently published the Swedish study, which followed up for 10 years, and uh, it said that there is significant positive correlation with these factors. But the most important factor is the protein urea. Uh, this early study in past in back in 2007, it showed that the, even the protein urea more than 0.3 gram, and if it is more than 1 gram, it is significantly associated with worse prognosis over time in the period of 15 years. So that is why most of our target, we target the protein urea reduction. It is our main target. So now we look at the KDGO 2021 guideline. It shows that when you first get a patient with IgNF dominant global nephritis, the first thing you do is to exclude the secondary causes, such as IgA vasculitis, IgA dominant infection related GN, or the secondary infection, viral and inflammatory causes. After that, uh, it is better to classify this patient with MIST C, that is a Oxford classification. And for all patients, the primary management, the choice is the optimum supportive treatment. That is for at least three months. The BP management, blood pressure target is here a bit lower, the 120-70. And the maximum tolerable dose of acimental ARB should be used in all for all patients. Lifestyle modifications, such as weight reduction, smoking cessation, these are for all. The major change that you see in the 2021 guideline is that for those patients who has this high-risk patient who has persistent protein rehab for more than one gram after three months of optimized supportive treatment, previously glucocorticoid was, was the first time treatment for them. But recently we see that the evidence of glucocorticoid is uh, now is getting out of favor. So nowadays we should uh, consider the experimental treatment uh, for all patients. That's up, uh, okay. Now if I first look at the steroids. The steroids were the first time treatment for many days. Especially the earlier studies like positive, meno, 
or desktop eigentrail, testing trail, which all, all of them shows the effect of steroid in reduction of protein urea. So based on these trials, there were some those recommendations at the testing study, many study in the studies. But steroid has many side effects. Especially stress should be used with very caution in case of obese, in those with secondary disease, those with diabetes, spectric ulcer, or their effectiveness may be much less in case of EGFR less than 30. Especially the last two reports, which has shown, uh, shown steroid in much lower level uh, in this treatment guideline. That is the testing study. The testing study shows that steroid was moderately effective in reduction of protein urea and also in reduction of ESKD and uh, rate. But it was associated with significant side effect. The number needed to harm was only five in case of serious adverse effect. So this testing study was stopped early. But uh, another study, the testing loaded study is going on, which may show that more effectiveness of lower dose testosterone, penicillin, methyl penicillin. The stop eigen trial, initial the three year study showed moderate efficacy, but after the 10 years, it is shown that within the limitation of retrospective study over a follow up of 10 years, IGNF with the patient did not benefit from additional immunosuppression on top of stop of supportive care measures. So, there were few other things which is now already gotten out of favor so and go in detail. So, selectomy was initially, uh, it is shown if efficacy in Japanese study, but it is not shown in other studies. There are many other things, such as therapy, cyclosomite, calcineurin inhibitor, rituximab, fish oil were tried, but all of them were not found effective. Microfilot, profetin, and hydroxychloroquine was found effective only a few limited studies in Japanese population. Like this study by Liu et al., this was so hydroxychloroquine was effective in Jap uh, Chinese population, but not shown in other studies. Microfilot, profetin with low dose prednisolone versus con conventional dose prednisolone. Microfilot, profetin. I mean, it already crosses 11 minutes. No, sir, uh, it is only 7 minutes. I am counting time. <laughs> The macrophilic mephilic combined with low dose steroid versus the full, for convert full dose steroid, uh, it is shown that it was almost similar efficacy as but associated with less si side effect. It is also shown in our study in BSMO. So now in some special situations like in nephrotic syndrome, it depends on the light treatment with IgNephropathy of nephrotic syndrome depends on the light mercury features. Light mercury shows lack of MCD should it be treated at MCD. If light mercury shows MPGN like features, it should be treated less such as high risk patients. If light mercury, if it is Nephrotic range protein without nephrotic syndrome, then it does should be treated conservatively. In case of AKI, if it is without crescent, it should be treated with supported treatment. If it is crescent, treatment should be treated as RPGN with cyclosmate or glucocorticoid. So now for last just only two minutes, we will look at some emerging treatments. Only two minutes left in the presentation. Some emerging treatments which are now under trial, which will be published hopefully within the last next two years and we will see the results that will may change our total treatment. It starts with the pathogen, it starts from the gut. And then we see the most uh, promising thing is that the enteric uh, coated uh, buddhisonide, which is the neficon, it was tried in phase two trial. Phase two trial, it showed significant, the nef uh, nefigan trial, it showed significant effects. And it is now conditionally uh, approved by FDA for. Uh, like use in IgN nephropathy. And the phase three uh, Nefica trial is currently going on. And then targeting the uh, April cytokine April, it is the uh, Envision trial, which is also currently going on. The protect trial, which shows that Sparks, uh, Sparsartan. Sparsartan is a combined anti uh, angiotensin and also anti. Uh, uh, sorry, due to time receptor antagonist, and the third receptor antagonist, it is also the interim result showing promising results. And also, some drugs targeting the lectin and the alternate pathway. I'll also show the name, which is currently under study. Will be hopefully within one or two years, this study will be published. The iptacopen, which is highly selective oral active drug, which is factor B in, in of the alternate pathway, which is also showed promising result in part uh, phase two trial and now under phase three trial. And lastly, of the world, the lectin pathway inhibitor, nasoplimab. <laughs> which is uh, the phase two trial showed promising effect, which is a lectin pathway inhibitor, and the phase two trial is currently going on. Last, last of all, the last slide, the dapa CKD trial. The dapa CKD trial, which we know that it was the effect of dapa glucosin on CKD patients, but among a significant number of those patients was IgN nephropathy patients. And those showed significant effect uh, in reduction of protein urea and also the secondary outcome, but you need further trial, and EMPA trial is going on for this. Thank you all. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Major Tahamid. <coughs> you got 10 minutes, but you initially you got lost 3 minutes. It's about 30 minutes. Okay. I've just uh, seen my watch. <laughs>